76 million of us just here in the U.S. We are the biggest generation that ever existed. We were called the me ones, the crazy ones, and boy, do we know what that means, don't we? In fact, we have reinvented every single phase of our life. We were the yuppies, we were the hippies. We like innovation. Well, now we are in the winter of our life. And I can assure you, this is not going to be your average winter. I invite you to join me at Boomerology Reviews every single week so we can figure out how boomers are reshaping this phase of their life. Join me. Welcome to Boomerology Reviewed. I'm Shahar Boyai, your host. My guest today will talk to us about manifesting what we want in life. Yes, there is a process for that, and yes, it works. We need to listen now to Gary to know how to achieve what we want in life. As everything else, it's just a process. And then I'm going to talk to you about an interesting fact I just found out, that boomers really have the highest rate of suicide in the nation. Why is that going on? Let's watch. Today, my guest is Gary Loper. Welcome, Gary. Good morning. How are you? Very good. Excellent. We are mainly today going to talk about manifestation, but before we start, I would like you to tell us a little bit about yourself. A little bit about myself. Well, I'm a Twitter expert, the master of the Twitterverse, a life and business coach, helping people master the business of life by building better relationships. And those relationships start with yourself. And then when you get that one mastered, relationships with your partners, your business, your community, your social networking are all able to be able to be very much improved. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And we talked about positive thinking, and I mentioned about manifesting. And you know, I had many questions: how to manifest, uh, how exactly we go about it. So, can you give me an overview about, you know, positive thinking and how we we manifest things in our life? Sure. I think a lot of people are, you know, they're searching. Say, oh, you know, I want to manifest this this good stuff. But they probably don't even realize yet that they're already manifesting. You know, you're worried about all the bad stuff happening. You're manifesting more bad stuff than, because our subconscious mind cannot differentiate between negative and positive. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. So whatever you focus on and whatever is your most dominant thought is that's what you're going to attract in your life. I used to do more rela uh, singles relationship coaching. And in doing that, I, I'd ask people, he says, what do you want to have in your relationship? And they would say, well, I don't know. I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this or something. You know. So what happens? They wound up meeting the smoking, drinking jerks who left the seat up and didn't call in the morning. It's got a little exercise I want to be able to show you and how you can be able to shift that. Mm -hmm. This is what I call. So uh, in the room that you're in right now, I want you to be able to notice everything. So look around you, you know, look at your shelves, look at everything around you. Notice everything, but don't notice the color red. <laughs> but I told you not to notice that. Yeah. So so you cannot not do something. Mm -hmm. So when so now we know that the mind works. So don't look for red, you're going to look for red. So what is it that you do want and then you focus on being able to shift that. That's exactly what I did when I created my list of qualities that I put together for my singles ad when I met my wife. Mm -hmm. And it was very important to be able to shift it and be able to untie the knots and take those knots out. I don't want this. I don't want that. And to be able to focus on what it is I do want. So I wound up creating a list of characteristics. And there were over 40 of them that were things that were very important to me on what I wanted in a partner, what I wanted them to be able to be towards me. And and all so I wound up creating that list, and that's what my singles ad was. And I attracted a number of people where that ad was attracted to them, but it, you know they they didn't they weren't all the perfect match for me. And that's one of the things we want to talk about is you know you talk about practice dating, and a lot of the practice dating you need to do is to be able to refine your list. You're going to be able to say okay oh well. I wasn't aware of this. Now, okay, now it's really important that I, I you know, I, I find the opposite of that. So, you know, like if you don't want the smoker or the drinker or whatever it is, 
what is the opposite of that? So the smoking and drinking is something that's somebody who's health conscious, who takes care of their body, who exercises. Once you know how your mind works is to be able to get that, you know, that subconscious attraction going. You were saying is we make a mental list of the things that we do want to attract or do you also suggest we really write them down? What is the oh, best? Oh, this is an amazing thing and this is what I love about how business and relationship coaching really blend blend together mm -hmm. is because because I, I put together a goal setting workshop and in and, and have that available and people can be able to contact me for it but it was they mentioned that only three percent of people have goals mm -hmm. only three percent of people have goals that they can be able to specify what it is and what's amazing only one percent of those people actually write them down Wow. And it's been sh it's been shown even going back. I think Napoleon Hill said that you know a written goal is ten to one hundred times more powerful and more apt to happen than just something we keep in our head. So writing the goals down and being specific and getting them on paper, and probably even then then next turning them into affirmations. It's, you know, you know, I like the go part a lot, and I actually carry in my purse a, a, a notebook, and I rewrite my goals every single day. So I have about 21 of them. Every single day, I go through them and I write them once again. And I have noticed, Gary, that they become more real by the minute, in the sense of you know, I, oh, I, you know, I, I'm like this, or I, I I'm really getting that, or something mm -hmm. like that. Do you agree with that? Oh, excellent. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think one of the things by writing it down, mm -hmm. there is something, and I don't, I don't understand the ne the neurological things that happen, mm -hmm. but the act of writing it somehow triggers something into our subconscious. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the science, but it works. <laughs> and by writing it down every day, you know, I, I have my to do list, and I wind up rewriting. I got, you know. If I don't get rid of yesterday's, I got six scraps of paper all with previous day's to-do list, and mm -hmm. I and it's entrenched in me. Okay, this has got to get done. This has got to get done, and I yeah. I know I know it without having to look at it. Mm -hmm. So writing it down and reminding yourself. That's why, you know, the affirmations are. Tell me about them. Tell me are, about them. Are, 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 they're so powerful. It's you know for affirmations to be able to work. Mm -hmm. They need to be personal, present, powerful. I am, which is a statement. You know, it's a statement of ownership. I am. I am thrilled. I have the relationship of my, you know my, my you know the the best relationship in my life. Mm -hmm. I am thrilled by the house that I live in. I, you know, I'm I'm excited about this. And if you make it present, even though if it's not so, again, remember our subconscious mind can't differentiate between negative and positive it doesn't also know real from our imagination mm. and we can start creating the picture in our mind of what we want so if we start looking at what we want to be able to have in the future and create it in a present tense that you act as if you have it already interesting but don't uh, if I say for example um, I make thirty thousand dollars a month don't you think something triggers and say no? You don't. If you've never made thirty thousand dollars a month, yes, uh -huh. yes, it will. But there are no unrealistic goals. Right. There's there's just unrealistic get deadlines. So if you've never made thirty thousand, you're probably that little voice in your head is going to say, "Oh no, who are you? You're not going to do that." So what you need to be able to do is like, okay, so I'm not going to make it this month. But what is, what is a realistic projection, and what can I do? How can I chunk this down into what I need to be able to do? My suggestion with the financial thing is, you know, what's a number that you're comfortable with? If you're comfortable with two thousand, okay, let's set that goal for three thousand. Mm -hmm. So if you're already making two, let's stretch it. Let's start, you know, increasing it a little bit at a time and chunk it up. And then look at the, okay, then with probably within six to nine months, you'll be able to get there. But mm -hmm. I think a lot of times if we get these big goals, they get overwhelming and we get stuck. Uh -huh. and, and the way that you eat an elephant 
is one bite at a time. Uh -huh. and, and I run in this all the time. I'm a, I'm a visioner. I get an idea in my head. And so instead of just turning into one huge elephant, I get a herd of elephants and I, I can get overwhelmed. And that's when you just have to be able to stop and breathe and say, okay, what can I do a chunk at a time? And if you're strategic about it, you can be able to work backwards mm -hmm. to where you are now to where you want to go. And then you've got a strategic plan of what you need to be able to do. And I think that was one of the the secret sauce that was missing in the secret. Okay. Was the action plan. You know, they talked about, you know, you, you know, this attraction, we need to think this way and be able to do this. Mm -hmm. But they they neglected to be able or they edited it out all of the action steps. People start thinking that they only have to think positive and everything will happen. But it's a whole process. You know, when I was dating, just for an example, you know, I realized, and it probably took me a, lo a longer time than it should have to be able to figure this out, I realized that that perfect woman was not going to show up at my door. I had to be able to take some action and be able to do some things to be able to increase the probability. And in doing that, you're going to meet people to be able to help refine your list and go through that. Mm -hmm. So. You know, start going to, you know, churches or synagogues or, you know, networking events or being able to look at, you know, if you wanted somebody who's healthy and health conscious, the odds are small that they're probably going to be hanging out at bars. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to be able to go looking, looking for places where those people are more apt to be able to be. And probably, you know, a real big piece of advice is do the things that you love to be able to do. You know, when I first moved to St. Petersburg, I, I rode bike a lot. So I, I joined a bicycle club, and I met a lot of people through bike biking. And so you already have a common interest in something that you both love, and then so you have a place to be able to move forward from. You decide what you want to manifest in the positive side of everything that you want to manifest. You, mm -hmm. can, you can then create affirmations that have to be personal, they have to be a present and they have to be powerful yes. and then you really create a plan on how you can really facilitate that to happen in your life is that correct yes 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 i think one of the other things too that that's helped with us is we cr you know, create a vision board mm. we created a vision board of what we think it would be our our healing center uh, of encompassing all the different things that both carol and i want to be able to do and I know a number of the women that I dated earlier had vision boards about relationships. Now I just remember I, you know, none of my characteristics on my list were physical characteristics. Mm -hmm. okay. But you know, you have to be able to. Look at, but I was, I was conscious because I knew that the words that I chose, you know, walk, walks, bike ride, yoga, health food. All of these other things were probably, you know, the person that was going to attracted to that was going to have the physical characteristics that were going to be able to be pleasant, and that was going to be a bonus. And after you created your vision board, what did you do with it? I've got it up on my wall, <laughs> so it's there. It's there every single day. And you looked at it. I, I look at it that, that the presence pulls in my wife's a graphic artist so she pulled in all of these images and put it in together and it's actually a uh, a three by four foot <laughs> you know vision wow. board up, up on wow. you know that's the thing, same thing with affirmations is affirmations vision boards post them up in your house mm -hmm. you know e even the thing about you know having an I love you in the mirror Wow. Uh -huh. so, so, you know, so when you go to the mirror, say, you know, just read that out loud to the person who's standing in front of the mirror with you <laughs> and just be able to start that. But, you know, it's, it's really amazing that, you know, once we write them down and put it out there, you know, we're engaging our senses, mm -hmm. which is another really powerful exercise because we've been hinting around this. But my first coach told me about this five senses exercise that, you know, really to be able to help something come to flourishing is that we want to be able to engage all of our senses so imagine that you that you have this goal you know there's a perfect partner it's a perfect opportunity whatever it is now imagine your favorite holiday and at that holiday gathering you're celebrating 
you know, this perfect, this perfect partnership, this perfect job. So what's going on there? What sounds do you hear? What smells are emitting from the kitchen? You know, what are people are, ta what are people are talking about? You know, what, what do you see? What colors, uh, you know, in, invite all your senses and create that picture. So you see this imagery that we're creating through all of these exercises, we're creating this 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 perfect ideal per partner that we want to be able to have. We're, and then we're seeing this in the future in a present tense that we're living it and we're going through that. And I think that, you know, when you engage all of these senses, that becomes your most dominant thought. Mm -hmm. that I really want that to happen. I want I want my relatives. I want my friends. I want them to be able to celebrate with us. You know, want to be able to. You know, this is this is what we'd be eating. This is what the smells are going to be going. I will have this incense or these candles, and you know, you know, grandma will be making this, whatever it is. And you know, when you do that again, our subconscious mind, whatever we focus on, we're going to create. Mm -hmm. It starts becoming real for us. Yes, yes. Awesome. Gary, I know you have a lot about goal setting as well, and I know we don't have the time to go into that. So if people want to know more about it. It's very simple. Uh, send me an email to Gary at GaryLoper.com, G-A-R-Y-L-O-P-E-R, and just put in the, the subject line or in a text, just you know, ask about the goal setting mastery program. I've got a, rec a one-hour recorded webinar that if you just send it to you request it, I'll send it to you. You can be able to listen to it free, no, you know, no charge. And included in that is a 10 step process on how you can be able to become that goal setting master and be able to bring these things into your life and really turn on that manifestation magnet to you. That's awesome. Gary, thank you so much for this information. I'm going to start writing my affirmations right now. Hey, hey, oh, this is another thing. I share a lot of affirmations on Twitter, so just follow me on Twitter, at Gary Loper. Look for my Just For Today affirmations. Okay. All right. Great. Okay, thank All you right. very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Here is something that baby boomers lead that we shouldn't. Okay? It's the suicide rate. It's amazing, but we, right now, commit suicide much more than any other age bracket. Let me read this for you. Beginning with the recession, 2008, uh, as the nation's economy is leading to recession, the suicide rate of adults between 45 and 64 surpass rates for people older than 85 and far beyond suicide rates be by, by teens and young adults. We actually led all age brackets, and this is according to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. Now, you could think that only losing the home, the flat economy, uh, lack of money would be the main reasons, but it's not. Also, divorce, reliance on pain, on pain killers, and of course, chronic diseases. This is a very serious matter, and most of us have dealt with that in our family. So if you think somebody in your family may be suffering from depression and having some thoughts on suicide, go look for help. Don't wait. And if you yourself are going through a tough time, you know there are many ways for you to go look for help. Do it. Uh, we need you here on dessert for as long as possible. After all, baby boomers tend to live forever. Don't cut that short. I hope you enjoyed the show this week. If you did, don't forget to share, thumbs up, rate our channel. These are the type of things that keep us going. And I'll meet you next week at Boomerology Revealed.